High on a mountaintop, an army of scientists work desperately to build this giant rocket, this modern Noah's Ark to carry a few picked survivors of our doomed civilization to a new life on another world. I think all you scientists are crackpots. Nothing is going to happen. Hello, Commander Leak. Oh, Commander Leak. I tend to look at technology coming from a non-scientific background as something that uh, holds uh, good as well as bad, and but is often, with at least within its first few years of uh, introduction, uh, a certain degree of ineptness where some new development is presented, but sort of like the Hubble telescope where you send it up and it's going to be a wonderful instrument. Unfortunately, we forgot to check it while it was on Earth. It's uh, in my books I have like people forever being betrayed by their technology. Refrigerators that won't stop talking. It off, but smoke this, it won't stop talking. It off, but smoke this, it won't stop talking. And doors that won't open when they're supposed to open, that sort of thing. I just try to throw that in as touches because that would seem to be the case, I think, with most people dealing with the more advanced technology that we have, just the question of uh, will it so advanced that anyone is able to work it except for the people who developed it. The thing about new technology, the thing about new technology, it... wow, magic! But it's often been said that any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. Technology was certainly used as a crutch in the pulp fiction. You didn't have to explain faster than light drive, you simply had it. You didn't have to explain um, anti-gravity, everybody just simply had it. I think in some ways magic is being used in the same ways by, by writers that it simply exists. But if you start looking at the good writing that uses that, you'll start finding that there's explanations for it. Some of them go back in tradition, some of them go into mythology, some of them go into technology to explain the magic. There's not much difference because nobody understands the basis of technology any more they uh, understand the basis of magic. But at least in, when you go to school, they pretend like they know what the basis of technology is and there's much more uh, footing, sound footing for the elementary ideas but uh, you have a magic stone you don't know what's what's going to happen, there's no predictability to it and I think this is uh, uh, of course magic is uh, defined another big reason is that magic is defined just by the persons uh, using it at the time. Uh, technology is something that's um, in the public domain, so to speak. Everybody's agreed on what technology is. But magic, it varies from uh, place to place. There, there's a rule in, in writing science fiction and fantasy that you can only break one law. If you're, um, for example, if you're writing a technological story, you can have faster than light drive, but you can't have teleportation too. If you're writing magic, you can have magic that is caused by one source of power, but you can't bring in a magic from another source. And that, people who break those rules are bad writers. Let me ask you this, Marianne, which brings us to the big question. How much science should there be in science fiction? Whatever it takes to make the story work. I've written fantasy. There was no science in it. <laughs> me, when I write fantasy, I seem to pick up an idea, an interesting idea, and run with the ramifications just as if I had read something uh, in, in Scientific American and run with it as a science fiction a story. Larry Niven, for example, writes, sometimes writes science fiction with, with a very hard science basis to it. On the other hand, books that are published as science fiction may be complete romances. Uh, for example, taking an, an example outside writing, uh, the Star Wars novels were, were way out fantasy romances uh, clothed in a hard science type basis but there, there was really no science involved in, in that at all some people said that fantasy is science fiction for people who don't like science yeah but do you have to like science to like science fiction I mean do you have to like murder to like Agatha Christie in your book strings you use a super string theory and only a few physicists understand it so how could anyone enjoy your book super string theory is a, is a very esoteric branch of particle physics at the moment and I don't to understand all the 
ramifications of it. In fact, I think you, you need very complicated mathematics to understand it, but uh, I used a little bit of jargon involving superstring theory to explain how I got my characters from one world to another. In superstring theory, as I understand it, they assume that there are many more dimensions than we are aware of in our normal three-dimensional world, and the others are suppressed. So I simply invented a machine that switched some of these dimensions with other dimensions, and thus I could move my hero and heroine to, to another world. And it's just as likely to work as the hyperspace drive that other writers have been using for years, so why shouldn't I? Well, on the other hand, you should not make any egregious scientific errors if you can help it, and you should basically know what you're talking about. I think that's an obligation that's true of any writer. Particularly in television and film, they don't seem to apply it to science fiction very often. I've had that argument on television shows where they're about to you know, they, they're using the word galaxy and solar system interchangeably. And, uh, you know, I'll say, look, you, you would never do this on any other kind of show. I mean, if you were filming an episode of a television series set in San Francisco, you wouldn't put the Statue of Liberty in the harbor, even if it made a real good show, because you would be afraid that people at home would say, but the Statue of Liberty isn't in San Francisco. These people must be morons, which is why they work in Hollywood. On an isolated Pacific island, the Navy lands a party of daring scientists to solve the mysterious disappearance of an entire atomic research team. Strange horror strikes first at the plane that brought them. And then, earth-shattering tremors begin tearing the island to shreds. Okay, Professor, how are the crabs blowing up the island? I am not sure, but imagine they are able to send out arcs of heat. They are packed with it. They can melt and fuse parts of the cabins, explode the materials contained, and bring about the slime. Uh, ah, it's doing it again. Stupid glove, stupid computer, stupid technology, eye-hand coordination, my eye. Ow! Oh, my eye! Ah. Is it just me, folks? What do you think? Well, don't just say it. You're going to have to write me a letter. I can't hear you. Tell you what, if science and technology are not your definition of progress, write me a letter. My friends down on Earth can forward your mail electronically. If, on the other hand, you think science and technology are great, then, well, you can fax me directly. Me, I think I prefer the traditional, old-fashioned way of doing things. I view technology as friend, certainly not foe, and I'm not indifferent at all. Uh, but I think that it takes uh, responsible uh, humans to to take good advantage of the technology that's available to us and will be becoming so in, in the next, over the next few years. For a while in the early, late 60s, early 70s, Jeannie and I were both part of the back to the land movement that sprang up. Uh, hippies all went to the woods and built themselves domes and, and ashrams and stuff. And the idea, I guess, was to find out could we survive without technology if we had to. Uh, the answer is yes, but you don't want to. Uh, surviving without technology even at the level we were trying, that we were not living without technology. Our survival depended on axe heads that we could not have forged for ourselves, someone had to do for us, uh, chainsaws that we were not capable of assembling. And yet, even at that level, uh, it just seemed that to stay alive without technology simply required that you spend every waking moment trying desperately to survive. You don't get a lot of writing done. You've got to stick a drag of wood in the fire every 20 minutes. 